Go, on, go get a drink. Go get a drink. Oh, uh, we we're out here pigeon hunting. Yes, finally found us a feed. And as you can tell by all the water and me sweating, it's humid and we've got a ton of rain the last few days. Yo, what up y'all? Welcome back to another one. Uh, we are here and this is awesome. Got permission on a small feed, not very big, not large, but I think it will provide for uh, me and Frederick. So got it all set up, decoys are up. We are ready to sit down and wait for the birds to show up. This is an afternoon hunt. Um, I scouted them this morning, looked pretty good. So I hope I'm making the right call uh, hunting it in the evening first. So, but I'm gonna keep it short here and get to hunting. All right, today, like I said we were gonna do on uh, the last hunt we did, which was the starling hunt, I promised uh, first pigeon hunt we would be using these. The shorties, these are an ounce and three quarter long. Uh, eight shot, 15 sixteenths of an ounce. They're absolutely tiny. So we did the starling hunt, y'all loved it. So did I. It's time to see if we can kill a pigeon with them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to load the shorty uh, first, like so. And then I'm gonna back it up with a two and three quarter shell, a normal lead load that I would usually use. So if I miss on the first shot with the small load, I'll have that bigger one coming right behind it to try to get that bird on the second shot. If you guys like these videos, please smash the thumbs up button before we get going. Alrighty, go show you the spread real quick. Uh, I had to walk in, could not drive in today, so I just got out here as far as I needed to. The ground is extremely, extremely muddy. There's no way to get a side-by-side -side in here or a quad without just absolutely wrecking the farmer's field. But this is what I got going. One mojo, really low to the ground, and one bag of full body pigeon decoys. I would say it's roughly like two and a half dozen, three dozen, I'd say two, two and a half dozen ish. 20, I think it's actually like 27, probably 27 decoys if I recall correctly. So that's what I've been getting it done with. Uh, don't need a bunch, don't need a lot of motion. Well, something really scary just happened with Freddy boy. Um, I got him down here in this canal, fresh water coming in here, cooling off again. Um, something scary just happened, extremely scary. I will explain it in a minute, but I gotta get him loaded up. Wow. Um, it's warm. I bet you it's um, 80, 80 degrees right now, maybe. Good wind though, the breeze is helping a bunch. Uh, that was the third time, so this is what happened with Fred. My God, I, that was scary, man. I thought I was gonna lose lose my dog for sure, and I'm not kidding you. Um, that was the third time that I had got up. We've just been sitting here waiting on the pigeons to show up. I knew I was early, but I got up again, and uh, for the third time took him to the water, the big water hole, not even 100 feet in front of me. So there is the decoys right past it, that big water hole, it's nice and deep. Long story short, just to let him waller in it and get a good drink and cool off. Third time, in about an hour, he was in there for probably, I don't know, a minute or two. And he like looked at me, he like turned around, he's standing in the water and he like looked at me and his head did this, I'm like, Fred? And his butt just like fell, his butt fell. And he was like shaking, his hind was shaking. Now a lot of you know that my dog does have hip dysplasia. So his butt fell and he was like kind of like dragging his butt and like trying to get to me. You could tell he was scared and he just wanted to get to me. And he like barely made it and then he was falling over and his front legs weren't working very well. Like just all discombobulated. And so I just held him and laid him down on his side or no, he was on his belly. He like, and it was like, he had his chin like tucked down to his chest and it was like real stiff, just like that. I was, I thought I was gonna lose my dog right there in the water. Just started nice putting water on him, cooling him off and petting him and talking real gentle and sweet to him. It took like five minutes. I've never experienced that with anyone, let alone my dog or 
my little brother, um, he's autistic, so we always, uh, my mom experiences it a, it a bunch, and a lot of you don't know that, but um, I've never got to, I've never seen a dog do that. I'm, I'm guessing, and my wife thinks too, that it was probably a seizure. <sighs> he's not that hot. I've had him in the water. Yeah, he's panting. Completely swarmed by, by flies, poor dog. That was very, very scary. If you can help or do you know what happened or if you've seen labs do this, uh, please drop a comment down below and let me know. That was uh, that was wicked. I probably need to get him into the vet. Oh, first two pigeons to the field. Hopefully they didn't catch me out there. I was just walking around trying to cool off. I think they seen me. Holy smokes. I got here way too early. I am sweating. Absolutely just drenched. Eaten up by mosquitoes. Whew, I earned this one. Hopefully we can get something on the ground here. Oh, here we go. Finally a single looking at us. Got him. Third shot. Well, I missed on the first one. Holy cow. Missed the first shot with the small guy. Don't know how, because he completely decoyed. Thank goodness I had some more in the back though. So we're gonna trade that one out. We don't have Fred to go get that bird for us, which is okay. I'd rather him just, I'd rather him just stay home, relax. First bird down though. Did not hit it with the shorty shell. That was horrible. I gotta get freshened up, guys. I am rusty. It's been way too long. All right, I don't see any birds coming. Let's go see what we got here. Single, all by himself. Absolutely loved it. The wind changed from uh, like a southwest wind to a northwest wind. So I adjusted the spread. I added the flock of flicker uh, because the first two didn't want to come to it. But here we go. We got a black one. He's pretty. Here we go. Well, he needs some help. There we go. Let's give him a minute. Well, there we go. Straight black. Really doesn't even have any checks on his wings. You know, usually he would be a black check. Youngish bird, not real young, but good looking black bird. Here we go. So today without the dog, with pigeons, you do not have to uh, have managed and labeled and, and every pile, this and that, uh, like we do for, um, duck and goose so since fred's not here i'm gonna go ahead and leave the dead ones after we check them out out in the spread because they help two more right here come on baby first shot oh i need some help I need some help. Boy, Bob. I don't know if it's just that first shell that I'm not used to it. It's light, I don't know. This is a bad situation. Oh goodness. Boy, howdy. Well, I cannot deny that. They didn't completely decoy by no means, but they were well within shooting distance. I don't know if I'm not putting it on them or what. See, um, I get rusty too. I hunt a ton and I get rusty. I gotta refresh up here and get my eye back. <sighs> Plus, I don't think my mind's right. After the Fred deal, it really messed me up. It's kinda the only thing my mind's been on since it happened. So now that we're shooting, hopefully I can snap out of it and get to work here. My mind's just somewhere else and I just, ever since Fred, um, I don't know. Whew. Gotta get my mind right now that we're shooting. Gotta get to work here and get it done. Uh, poor Frederick, he's just on my mind a lot. Here comes a mallard. Oh, here comes that mallard again. Check this out. He landed right in that water, right in front of us. That's cool. 
that thing is now. He's literally right behind my decoy spread. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go scare him out of there. I don't want to uh, get any collateral. <sighs> Watch, hopefully I just get to step out a couple steps and he'll fly off. But this is what I'm talking about. You guys gotta think about these things. It is not duck season at all, not even remotely close. Here's a spread, I'm walking out to it. And this is where I would be shooting. There's the mojo and then right behind it, you'll see him get up here in a minute, is the duck. Right there. There he goes. Plenty close enough um, to accidentally have some collateral damage, and I am not about that life. Always do your best to prevent quote accidents. You know what I mean? Oh, where'd you go? Where did you go? There's a single. Oh, there he is. Oh, these flies. And mosquitoes. Oh, <laughs> I suck again! Four pack out front. Come on, get in here. They are weary. Wondering if I should shut off all the motion. Think it might help. Well, uh, think it's time. That was a good looking four pack. I looked up and they were right there. I thought that they were going to swing right in here. But I think it's time to uh, shut these off and just see if the next new birds that come to the field like it without the motion. That is my go-to thing. If I see a group of pigeons not like it like that a couple times, I give it about twice. And then it's time to kill the motion and see if that works. Usually it does. Usually it does. Sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. I just don't know. <sighs> Telling you what, some air conditioning and a fan <clears throat> It's honestly what the doctor ordered for old Frederick. It is now, um, what, two days? No, we're sitting at three days later. That's what we're at. And uh, not gonna lie, that was very scary. Um, I'm gonna go through it, run through it, and just tell you what happened. Fred and I have, uh, we've done some, some hot pigeon hunts, but nothing that hot. Hi, Ricky, how are you? How are you, pretty boy? You just been napping. You still got sleep in your eye, buddy. Uh, he's doing awesome, feeling great. Um, come on, let's go outside. Uh, but that was my fault. That was my fault. I should have known better. We've done hot pigeon hunts before uh, with limited water sources, but nothing that hot, nothing that humid. We have never hunted, Fred has never hunted with that high of a percentage of humidity in the air, if you know what I mean. So uh, today, if you can see the trees, hear the wind, it's windy today. That day there was zero wind. I looked at the weather and I think it said it was supposed to be like 82 or something, 81 degrees, not bad. Um, but as the day progressed, the wind went down and the humidity went up. Uh, so. My fault, uh, I knew all that sheet water was in there. So I knew that I had water sources right there that I was gonna get him wet constantly and let him have drinks after drinks. That was the third time when this all happened, the third time that I had taken him to the water and let him lay in it for a while. Not just get a drink and go back, but let him lay in it. We hadn't shot a bird. He hasn't, he never went and retrieved a long bird or ran or, you know, exhausted himself at all he had just been sitting and laying but just the humidity alone knocked it out of him and so i took him in uh to the vet and he said bob uh you're not the only dog owner that has came in today uh with their dogs big dogs like yours thick coated dogs with having heat issues 
He was like, just be lucky that you had water there and you're able to get him in it right away. And it wasn't that bad. He was like, if you would have been in a dry field and not had that option, it could have been a lot worse. So now we know, now we know, now we know. That was uh, kind of the first, well, that was the first uh, afternoon pigeon hunt try um, of the year. So if Fred goes pigeon hunting, it is only going to be in the mornings. That is all. And even some of the mornings when it's gonna be 80 some degrees, probably gonna be too hot so just gonna have to be a lot more conscious about that a lot of you dog trainers out there you can call me stupid you can say oh you should have known I get it but dude he had never even retrieved a bird or nothing he was just sitting lots of water I'm not explaining myself anymore now we know but I did do the right thing by cooling him off immediately uh, laid him down in the water just covered him in water kept rubbing him and talking to him really good um, and he's doing great it was uh, the next day, he was a little slow, but now he's back to his normal Freddy self. He wants to run everywhere and be a good boy. That's what he was doing. He was being a good boy. He wants to hunt. He wanted to be out there, obviously, but <sighs> never again, never again. It was so hot that uh, the whole next day I had like a migraine. So I think that I even got pretty heat exhausted. Um, myself so i felt pretty weird that evening i felt bad i felt really bad because i knew what happened i automatically knew what i did wrong and i knew it was my fault not fred's and that's why i called my wife beth uh you know immediately it was like come pick up fred he needs to go home he need to put the cold gar you know garden hose on him let him soak she did she gave him a bath took him inside let him rest in the ac um so we did the right thing but i just want to warn you all before we get off of here um I have uh, two dog trainer buddies and one I uh, read his story on Instagram this morning and he's, he had a screenshot of the weather and it said, wow, this hot and the humidity really kills things. They can only train until like 10.30 a.m. and then they gotta shut it down for the whole day and wait for the evening. So just training dogs, even though they're, they're in water, uh, these dog trainers are having to shut it down. So you guys are gonna have to too. Be careful out there. Don't overdo yourself. Drink lots of water. I know we all hear that and I sound like your mother or your dad, but that day, two days ago, was pretty darn scary, not gonna lie. It was that hot. I thought I was gonna lose my dog. It was, I didn't film it happening. I had no time to do that, nor would I want to. So you live and you learn and uh, we gotta take care of our pups. So guys, I just wanted to tell you, uh, I have been uploading a ton of new content, uncensored content, over at Uncut Outdoors. It is linked down below. When you guys go there and subscribe, please use that link in the description because when you do, it gives me credit. Absolute, you know, right off the bat credit, and that credit goes to me. And it helps me because the YouTube channel just doesn't do so good like it used to because it got demonetized not in views but in revenue so that's one way to support me i really appreciate all of you all of you over there everyone that's gone over there it sounds like you guys are really enjoying it i get to be myself i get to uh sip on some brews i get to use whatever language i want and be myself and it's very very nice let me tell you and if any of your friends family want to go over there and join please make them use my link as well it really helps and i'm just saying that is one way to support bobby guy and help uh the channel remain here so thank you guys but girl i ain't even getting mad cause i've been getting laid back baby you should know that i don't need your criticism Pessimism.